the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's love. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 202 2 Kings 24 and Jeremiah 1 to 3 Jeremiah the prophet of tears Jeremiah was sent to persuade South Judah for the last time before the day of their destruction struck as their judgment had already been decided by God. First point, God claimed the end of the monarchy system to Jeremiah. God gave three evaluations regarding the 500 years of monarchy. The first was during the days of Samuel, that the king would enslave all the people for his own benefit. The second was the mid-evaluation during the days of Isaiah. This was that God would destroy North Israel, but he would maintain South Judah. The third was during the days of Jeremiah, which was the final evaluation. This was God declaring the end of the monarchy. God told Jeremiah about the fall of South Judah and also the 70 years of captivity in Babylon. God told Jeremiah that the fall of South Judah was not the end, but his brief discipline. This was in order to restore a kingdom of priests. Second point, 2 Kings chapter 24 and Jeremiah chapters 1 to 38 should be read together through tongue. Babylon attacked Egypt, whom South Judah was relying on, and Egypt soon became completely desolate. The attack on Jerusalem from Babylon started during the reign of the 18th king Jehoiakim, and God explained to Jeremiah why South Judah was being attacked. God clearly explained that it was because of the sins of Manasseh. During the first attack on South Judah, Babylon took the first group of captives who was Daniel and his three friends as well as making South Judah pay an enormous amount of tribute. Daniel recorded this in his book. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands, along with some of the articles from the temple of his God in Babylonia, and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. After the first attack on Jerusalem by Babylon, Jehoiakim died, and his son Jehoiachin became the 19th king of South Judah, but he also did evil just like his father. The Babylon Empire attacked once again, and this time they took Ezekiel and 10,000 other skilled workers as their captives. Like the first time, the second round of captives was taken, along with some articles from the temple. Zedekiah replaced his nephew Jehoiachin as a king. Third point, Jeremiah explained the 70 years of captivity through the big picture. God gave Jeremiah the big picture of why the people had to be taken as captives to Babylon for 70 years. The opening of this picture was Daniel chapter 1. In Daniel chapter 1, we can compare the objective of the Babylonian Empire and also God's objective concerning captivity. 
Thus, Babylon's reason for taking Daniel and his friends in 605 BC was to practice their Babylonian ideology through them, but for God, his project for a kingdom of priests became re-established. The middle part of this picture was the book of Ezekiel. In 598 BC, Babylon took the second round of captives, which included Ezekiel and 10,000 other skilled workers. Eleven years later, the majority of people were taken as the third group of captives excluding those who were able to work. To these people who were taken as captives, Jeremiah wrote letters to persuade the people to turn to God. The conclusion to this big picture was Ezra chapter 1. In 537 BC, Babylon fell, and the newly risen Persian Empire enabled the captives to return to Jerusalem after 70 years since the taking of Daniel and his three friends, the first group to return went back in 537 BC. This was fulfillment of God's words through Jeremiah. Jerubabel and 49,897 people returned to Jerusalem, with 5,400 pieces of articles of the Jerusalem temple. The times when Jeremiah ministered were the darkest times of South Judah. God had already made up his mind, and nothing could change it. Jeremiah was called around the age of 20. This was possible as he was educated by his father, Hilkiah, who was a priest. Jeremiah's mission was to deliver God's message and world management through Athria, Babylon, and Persia. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth, and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to unroot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Fourth point, God explained the sins of South Judah in thorough detail. Through Jeremiah, God told the people of the past of their ancestors, God told them how during the 40 years in the desert, he made a covenant with the ancestors to establish a kingdom of priests and for the people to become his holy people. God added that Israel left God with their sins. God rebuked the leaders who led the people in wrong directions. God furthermore addressed the sins of the people. The first was that they left God. The second was that they relied on their surrounding countries. The third was that they worshipped other idols. The fourth was that they abused the poor. Thus, they could not escape God's judgment. Fifth point, God rebuked the people of South Judah for following the sins of North Israel. God told Jeremiah why the people of South Judah could not avoid God's punishment. God outlined the arrogance of the people. God rebuked them for following in the sins of those Israel. God told them that despite seeing those Israel fall due to their sins, they still went in the same direction. Despite Josiah's religious reformation, they still did not turn back to God. God explained that they could not avoid their punishment but once their punishment was over, they would repent and be able to return to Jerusalem. God truly wished for the people to repent. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. 
and you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.